with him like six in the morning and I've got to go do an immigration and customs thing since I'm not a US citizen. It's too early. potatoes and barbecue sauce, I think. back in Seattle it's nice to be home actually it's nice to see the kitties and stuff um, and it's a driving act flight from San Diego so that makes travel pretty easy which was good I hate multiple flights so um maybe we should talk about the convention and um, Joko Cruise is great it was a lot of fun and I hope to go again next year I think <laughs> Um, I guess it was very hard because I, I, as you know, I do and work and attend a lot of conventions, um, but this was a cruise. And when you get, uh, well, at least for me, when you get on the ship, um, you were immediately cut off from commun communication and nobody really wants to plan anything ahead of time. So you get on the ship and it's a cruise ship 
and you're immediately feels like you're on like vacation holiday mode with a bunch of strangers except you know some of them but there's no way to really organize each other and schedule like we're gonna meet up tomorrow for a board game at this time because everyone's like yeah but you know there's a buffet or hey let's play this loose like let's try and play a game later but it's really hard to do that without like really nailing down a time and a place to do that um and there's no way to communicate twitter was down for a lot of people for most of the convention um and that made it it made it really difficult for me to figure out not only is this a convention or is this a vacation and i guess it is a mashup of both but it's hard to figure out what um what that really means. I was working it and this was the first time that Joko had been this big. This is the first time they ever had the full cruise ships to themselves and I guess they're still trying to figure out like they've grown exponentially every time that they've done this cruise so I think they're still trying to figure out organizationally where what is important to allocate resources to. It's much easier to see um, and for like a very small team to handle that when the convention is rather small but when the convention has grown to a full cruise ship with a land festival with 16, 17,000, uh, 16, 1700 people on board, um, that was only like several hundred when it started a few years ago, it's very tough to, you know, figure out what it works. So I was working this convention vacation thing, but there was no real schedule for me to be anywhere at any time. There was no real plan as to what my job was going to be. So I, I did a lot of stuff and I, I filled a lot of gaps here and there, but I think I would love to go back next year with a much clearer view of when I'm needed for what so that if I, so I can plan ahead and be like, okay, well, I'm not going to be working these times so I can plan things with friends and I can schedule because that's the only way that this can be a, uh, like a real convention is if I have time to plan ahead because there's very little time to plan on the boat because as you said, as we said, it's hard to find people because the communication doesn't work. Um, that sounds like I'm being down on it. it. It was amazing and I would absolutely love to do it again and I loved it and I loved the excursions and I, lo I met a lot of really great friends. I think that one of the interesting things about Joko is the group and the feel of community that you have from that. Um, it's it's a super incredibly tight knit family almost and and I, I realize that you have that at Gen Con too um but much more so you are locked in a boat with these people for like seven or eight days and it's only 1600 people really um so you get this really close family feel even though you don't know everybody you know you're all in the same boat and you're all I don't know, you're all together in this and there's such a strong sense of camaraderie there and very like family feel. A lot of people on this boat struggle with anxiety and social awkwardness and there's a lot of people that spend upwards of 50% of the time, their awake time in their rooms, um, which is a perfectly valid thing to do. A lot of people do it. They just hang out in their rooms, watch the ocean, watch movies, order room service. Like that sounds like heaven to me. Um, and that's totally acceptable and everybody's super supportive of that. If somebody needs like anxiety meds or maybe like um, something for an inner ear infection or nausea or seasickness, vertigo, um, they just posted it on Twitter and within like a couple of minutes, several people had left medication in their post box on their stateroom door. Um, like it's an incredibly supportive and amazing community that I am glad now to be part of and have experienced. And um, I would... I'm just, there's so much potential there. There's so much growth that can happen. And not, not necessarily in terms of size, though I, I expect that will happen, more in terms of just the quality and the experience. And I uh, would love to be part of that for 2018. We'll see what happens. But um, I am really excited to be home and I'm really excited to have been part of it. And I'm going to guddle, cuddle my cats and do some laundry. And I will see you guys at my next con, which I suspect is going to be Origins. Probably. Anyway, good night and thanks for coming with me. Bye. <laughs>